This video covers strategies to foster humanism and meaningful connection during virtual visits, as guided by the Presence 5 model. Presence 5, developed by Stanford Medicine's Presence Center in the Department of Medicine, offers a set of practices that foster humanism and connection in clinical care. The Presence 5 practices are to prepare with intention, listen intently and completely, agree on what matters most, connect with the patient's story, and explore emotional cues. This video will highlight how providers who are conducting telemedicine visits can adapt these practices during a virtual visit. The COVID-19 pandemic has upended the traditional clinic visit for healthcare providers around the world. Healthcare systems are rapidly scaling up telemedicine to reduce risk of infection and protect providers and patients. In the outpatient setting, many visits are taking place by video, introducing a digital barrier to the human connection that is central to clinical care. Even though telemedicine presents certain challenges for patient care, adopting specific humanistic practices can help providers foster meaningful connections with patients. What does it mean to be present? And what does presence mean for healthcare? What if, upon walking into an exam room, we could see patients as they are in the world and not just as they present in a moment of illness? What would we see? We might see their family, a hobby they're passionate about, the neighborhood they live in, or their occupation. Maybe we'd see their fear, distrust, worries, and hopes. As providers, we often enter an exam room without knowing our patients as individuals. We have just a couple of minutes to learn about what matters most to our patients and to connect with them in a meaningful way. Most individuals who enter into the medical profession do so to help and to heal and because they find deep meaning in their interpersonal connections with patients. Yet in modern clinical settings, providers face a multitude of barriers to being fully present and to forming these connections. The Stanford Presence 5 are evidence-based practices that can help providers forge meaningful connections with patients. While the Presence 5 practices were initially described in the context of in-person care, these practices can be adapted for virtual visits. The first practice is prepare with intention. When practicing telemedicine, and particularly when pressed by the demands of the COVID-19 pandemic, providers may have back-to-back -back video visits. In this context, Physical and psychological preparation before a virtual visit is foundational to a high-quality and meaningful interpersonal interaction. One best practice for preparing with intention is to take a moment before each visit to reset. Standing up and taking a deep breath between visits offers providers a chance to refresh. With virtual care, providers no longer have natural moments of transition, like knocking on the exam room door, crossing the threshold into the patient's room, or washing their hands. Instead, providers often remain seated as they navigate back-to-back -back visits to keep up with high volumes. Taking a moment before each visit helps providers recharge and focus their attention on the next patient. Another recommended strategy is to perform a brief chart review, emphasizing key elements of the social history. Familiarity with key psychosocial factors about a patient provides critical contextual information and allows the provider to convey that he or she understands and cares about the patient's history and life circumstances. Lastly, to prepare with intention, providers should minimize distractions to focus on the person they are about to see. Check that the audio and video functions work before initiating a visit and remove other potential distractions to help maintain a focus on the patient and the conversation. The second practice is to listen intently and completely. By exhibiting engaged body language and actively listening, providers give patients space to tell their stories. To listen intently and completely during a virtual visit, providers should sit up, lean forward, stay in the frame, and look directly at the camera to maintain eye contact. One tip for maintaining eye contact is to position the image of the patient as close to the web camera as possible 
and periodically look at the camera when speaking. Minimizing the screen in screen video function can also help providers focus on the patient and reduce distractions presented by their own face on the monitor. Providers should also nod and use facial expressions to communicate they are listening. If the provider needs to look away from the camera, for example, when taking notes, it is helpful to verbalize these activities to the patient. Video lag times often impede natural conversation flow, so it is important to pause after the patient speaks to prevent interruptions. The third practice in Presence 5 is to agree on what matters most. Because patients vary in experience and comfort with telemedicine, providers should ask the patient about priorities and expectations for the visit and share their own goals for the visit as well. Work to establish a virtual visit agenda that incorporates patient and provider goals. Keep in mind that patients talk less on average during virtual visits compared to in-person encounters. Use open-ended questions and utilize teach-back to assess understanding, as patients may be hesitant to speak up on video. For many patients, virtual visits present a new way of receiving care. Amidst much uncertainty, reassuring your patient that you are there for them despite the virtual nature of the interaction can offer comfort and help build trust. Explaining aspects of the healthcare system that remain functional as patients stay at home during the COVID-19 pandemic can offer reassurance. Providers should also educate patients about possible courses of action while minimizing medical jargon. When possible, after the visit, it can be helpful to send educational materials or an after-visit summary electronically or by mail, emphasizing the plan for the patient's top priorities. The fourth practice is to connect with the patient's story. In many ways, a video visit is an invitation into a patient's home and offers a unique opportunity to engage virtually with the patient's family, friends, and home environment. Inviting the patient to comment on visible personal items such as pets, photos, and furnishings can offer valuable insight about the identity of the person in your care. Towards the beginning of the visit, the provider should ask accompanying individuals to introduce themselves, providing an opportunity to learn about the patient's social support and address privacy and confidentiality concerns. Providers should also stay attentive to certain risks posed by social distancing and shelter-in-place orders. A video visit offers an opportunity to inquire about a patient's home environment and safety if appropriate. In certain situations, a provider might want to assess a patient for housing instability, food and medication insecurity, or substance use, all of which increase in times of isolation and crisis. Providers should be prepared to provide resources if a patient indicates that one of these factors is an issue. The fifth and final best practice is to explore emotional cues by tuning into facial expressions, body language, and changes in verbal tone and volume. While it is impossible to offer a tissue or a comforting hand on the shoulder over video, providers can assess body language and tone or volume of speech and ask a patient how they feel about their health concerns and other stressors. It is important to name and validate emotions that you hear from a patient and reassure the patient that it is normal and understandable to experience stress and worry in the current situation. The end of the video visit presents an opportunity to further build trust and solidify the diagnosis and treatment plan by asking for patient teach back. Closure of a visit can include a reference to the patient's family, health and social concerns, and priorities. In this way, providers convey to the patient that they listened fully and want to provide care that is aligned with the patient's circumstances and goals. The uncertainty and stress posed by COVID-19 is generating unrelenting demands on the healthcare workforce, yet humanism is more important than ever in this context. Even though virtual care inhibits the physical contact that is fundamental to the practice of medicine, the Presence 5 practices for telemedicine can help providers foster meaningful connections with patients during video-based encounters, thereby helping providers and patients endure this challenging time safely from a distance, yet together. 